So I'm glad you're here. Welcome to uh, Vision Sunday and uh, a long, long awaited Miracles in Motion spiritual growth launch as we talk about all that God's doing in our own lives. I know so many of us are concluding the 21 day Daniel fast. Some of you are like, I'm not stopping. And then you saw the cotton candy. You're like, Jesus, help me. My wife leaned over to me. She goes, I had a little bit of sugar. She goes, not good. I'm like, yeah, you're jittery. You're like, oh, 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 okay. So, uh, so hey, we, we've been fasting. We've been praying. If you're a guest with us today, uh, we're on fire because we put away everything of ourselves. How many of us realize during fasting, you come to the end of self and then it's just you and God. And you're like, oh, I don't like that about myself. And so that's the good thing about fasting. And so we're going to talk about all that God is doing in our hearts and lives. But more importantly, we're going to talk about this vision that uh, we have put on hold for over three years. And uh, part of that was COVID. Remember that? COVID that showed up, you know, still around, some of you, some of us, you know. And, uh, and, and so we kind of put on hold this vision of what God's called us to do, really, not just in the counties that we serve, uh, but really in New Jersey. And we're going to unpack that uh, today. Lots of fun stuff happening. We will totally give you your sugar fix uh, with root beer floats happening, cotton candy more candy, and uh, specifically at some of our locations, Crumble Cookie donated over 300 mega cookies to us. So thank you, Crumble Cookie. We give a shout out to you. I was like, yeah, so you waited in line for hours at Crumble Cookie. You show up to worship Jesus, we give it to you, baby. That's, that's, that. that's a miracle in motion. I don't need no lanyard that you're going to give me at Crumble Cookie. And uh, so we're going we're to have a fun time. Uh, all of your kids are going to get a Lego block in uh, children's ministry if you check them in. If you have them in the worship center, they ain't getting a Lego block. So you've got to check your kids in. And uh, they're going to build uh, in this season of miracles in motion. So let's pray. Father, uh, we're expectant. We're coming to the end of 21 days of fasting and prayer. Uh, Daniel in the Bible had a supernatural encounter with the angel. Uh, that was dispatched 21 days ago, but he was hindered because of spiritual warfare. Lord, I know today, and even over this weekend, there's been spiritual warfare. But we're here, we're in your house, worshiping you, God. Uh, we're, we're, We're in local churches, in counties, we're online worshiping. And so, Holy Spirit, would you come? Spirit of God, would you give us wisdom and revelation? Would you give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and a mind to conceive the plans that you have for us? And so we pray this and we ask this right now in Jesus Christ's name. And all God's people said, amen. 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 Hey, uh, you have a booklet uh, on your seat. Uh, every one of our locations has this booklet. Take it out. Uh, this is uh, yours to keep. So tell your neighbor, this is homework. Look at them right now and say, this is homework. This is homework. And then you reply back like, I don't like to read. Okay, I got a lot of pictures for you. So if you're a pictures kind of person, come on, man. How many of us like books with pictures? Okay, I know you. Uh, If you like uh, graphs and uh, pie charts, little mathematicians, I got you over here. If you like architectural renderings, I got you. And again, if you like pictures, I got you too. And if you don't like any of this, we're going to pray for you at the end of service, okay? And uh, and so we're going to go through this booklet. And here's my disclaimer, correct? When we talk about money in church, people get funny. Can we be honest? And there's a lot of us that have church hurts. Because some stupid, dumb pastor did something dumb. And, uh, and I'm sorry about that. And here at Fusion, we try and do not, we don't do, we try and not do dumb stuff, okay? And, and so we, we're going to talk about buildings and we're going to talk about some big figures today. But I don't want you to stress. And in fact, if you're a guest with us today, relax. You get all the cotton candy you want. You get all of the, I mean, you can have three root beer floats, whatever you want, okay? Uh, but, but there is literally not have hundreds, but thousands of us gathering today uh, that, that are all in with what God is doing in this region. And we're going to unpack that as we really unpack the theme over the next four weeks of this miracle in motion. It, it's, it's probably the second greatest, most important season that we've been in as a church for over 11 years. And the first one was five years ago with the God is Able campaign. And it was a spiritual growth journey that really transformed our church in a powerful way. There's a scripture found in the book of Matthew. Jesus is dealing with a lot of people 
uh, in different diverse communities, wealthy, poor, uh, sick, uh, religious, and he kind of gets to the end of Matthew chapter 19, and he says these profound words specifically to a rich young ruler that was trying to enter the kingdom of heaven, but it's not just the rich, there was the poor, there was the religious, there were the disciples, and in Matthew 19, 26, right there on the front page, it says, Jesus looked them in and said, let's read together, with man, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. Okay, let's say it again. But with man, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Okay, can we try one more time real loud? Cumberland County, I'm listening for you over there too. Let's try again. With man, this is possible. But with God, all things are possible. All things are possible. Amen. How many of us can say amen to that, correct? And I want to be... In a place in my life where I need God's possible in my impossible. Because the reality is that there are limits within my life. And I'm going to get to the end of that limit. And that's where I need God to step in. And so in the booklet today, uh, you received a little card that I would love for you to fill out and drop in the connect kiosks around the churches online. You've got one of these online. You have a digital booklet too, okay, uh, that you can go through. And, and I want to know uh, what miracle you're believing God for. But I also want to know what miracle you've experienced. And in one of the earlier services, I had a 16-year-old teenager come to me. And he says, I don't want to drop this in the connect kiosk, but pastor, I want to give it to you. He says, because I was on drugs... 16 years old, but now I'm free because of what Jesus is doing in my life. He said, I came to a Monday night youth group because someone in a store, in a, in a grocery store invited me. I showed up on a Monday night. I got saved. The next Sunday, I joined a dream team here at the church and I've been free. And he goes, I need to be baptized but he goes, I want you to pray for me. And he looks at me and he goes, Pastor, I just need to give you a hug. And I was like, come on, boy. Come, give me a big hug. And if you know me, I'm not a hugger. But if you've had a miracle, I've got to hug you, correct? And so fill this out because we want to celebrate the miracles of God. Because again, we get funny about money. It's not about money. I'm talking about a heart. And that's why we're going to do a spiritual journey uh, in regards to where's my heart? Is it wounded? Uh, is it offended? Does it have church hurts? Is it selfish? Fasting brings us to the end of self. And some of us have had a tough time fasting because it's like, ooh, I like this, I like that, you know? And, and so where are we with God? Where is our spiritual disciplines? Now, uh, I, I wrote you a nice letter and I gave you a beautiful picture of me and my wifey, okay? Nice, cutie, cutie, correct? She's like, I love you, baby. You didn't see the 20 minutes before that where she was about to kill me. Okay, and, and so t tell your neighbor that's homework, the little letter's homework, okay? Uh, but I want to I wanna look at the next page, and again, you know, all of our other locations follow along. Uh, the vision here is very clear. It's not changed for 11 years, we're still standing, okay? Uh, but the vision is we're going to reach people far from Jesus, we're going to equip Christ followers, and we're going to go to the, all the nations. Three things, I'm not good at remembering 11 things, five things, eight things, you know, they're like, what are the eight things? I'm like, I can remember three. How many of us go, yeah, that's good, correct? So everyone says, reach, reach, equip, go. Correct? Let's try it again. Reach, equip, go. Those are the three things we do. And, and, and predominantly our Sunday mornings is our reaching environment. We're seeing that in some wild ways. The reality is, is that when you are moving forward for Jesus, the reality is when the kingdom of God is moving forward, the enemy is always there to steal, kill, and destroy. Spiritual warfare is a reality that we face as Christ followers. Because the enemy, Satan, does not want to see territory established in this world that he governs. And so New Covenant Community Church was founded, and we, for, for the picture people, we gave you some nice pictures over here, okay? In 2003, New Covenant was founded. Uh, and then I, my wife and I moved here in August of 2012 uh, to take over the leadership of the church. The church was closing down. I had lost a lot of people. There was probably about 67 to 87 people uh, in Summers Point in a little building. They couldn't even afford to pay the mortgage. They were going to shut the doors. 
God supernaturally in Phoenix, Arizona, spoke to me on a Wednesday morning through a, a virtual vision of that church in Summers Point. That's the God I serve. That in Phoenix, Arizona, driving down Warner Road in Tempe, God can give me a vision, a very clear vision of the exact church in Summers Point, okay? That is a Spanish, vibrant, growing Spanish church today. So God's a God of miracles in that area there too. And so we took over the church and, and, and it just started to grow. But guess what? All of a sudden, Hurricane Sandy came around and uh, literally destroyed that area. Some of you are part of that. And we had no people. We had no money. But I said, God, we're going to get out and we're going to impact as many people as possible. And, and so God started sending people from Nashville and a truck driver from Michigan who called and said, the church that I belong to, a denomination, can't take my supplies. I said, come on, baby. I will take all the supplies you can get. I remember this big truck driver backing in. I said, unloaded. There was coats and perfume and batteries and the list went on and on. And God has always been in the miracle making business here in Fusion Church. So we outgrew uh, that, that, that location. We had a Saturday and three Sundays. Uh, we, from a business perspective, we grew 650% in those years. It was wild. Some of you were there. And God was moving in such a beautiful way. So we were out of space. We looked at a place to go. And Maze Landing had the Regal Theater. How many of us remember that, correct? And you were like, we will set up and tear down in a theater. And because of that faithfulness, God opened the Diamond Furniture store. How many of you bought furniture from Diamond Furniture? I'm so sorry. Lord, help these people make wise decisions in the future. Because they lied. They were closing down for hundreds of years and they never closed down until a church bought them. And so we, we, we had the faith to be the little church that could to move in when this was just a warehouse. Literally where we're at was the mattress part of it. And many of us don't know, this is the temporary worship center. Right behind us is the one we want to finish and complete. And so he came here and then, and then COVID happened. And then right after COVID, a group of you from Cumberland County, you're like, we believe God's giving us vision for Cumberland County. So we went over to Cumberland County Christian School. We put a stake in the ground. What I believe is when you put a stake in the ground, God honors it. I want to say today, when you put a stake in the ground, God honors that. And because why? That takes faith. Faith is the, the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things yet not seen. And so too many times we don't have faith because we're like, God, we can't see it. But we took a take and we, we, we put a stake in the ground. And the, you guys set up and have torn down in an incredible way, stewarded that facility at that Christian school. And then this last December, we were able to be gifted, gifted a million dollar property for one dollar. One dollar. That's the God of miracles that I serve right there, correct? And so today we want to talk about what, what does it look like to finish these facilities that God has given us to steward for our children, for our youth that are being saved and healed and set free. Because at the end of the day, we're for South Jersey and we see that on that next graphic. There's 1.92 million people that live in Southern New Jersey. There's North Jersey and then proudly we are South Jersey. Amen to that. Okay. And, and, and so how do we minister to this diverse Population, because we are a diverse church, and I celebrate that all day long as a church, that we are coming from different backgrounds, cultures, nationalities, and economic diversity to worship one Jesus, one Savior, one Lord, and one healer. Amen to that? It's children worshiping, youth worshiping, and adults worshiping. And so what does that look like from that perspective? Because as we've done that, let's celebrate what God has done last year. Just last year alone, in 2023, we saw 847 salvations here at Fusion Church between all of our family gatherings. That, right, 847. That is incredible. 2.75 times greater than the year before. Now, for, uh, I know some of us might go, oh, cool, cool. But the average church in the United States of America is 50 people. 50 people. We should be grieved that, 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 there's a, that there's a struggle happening. And so when we see 847 people put up their hand and say, I want to receive Jesus, that's a supernatural miracle of revival that is happening because we're choosing to be consecrated towards what God is doing in our region. Last year, 167 baptisms, people saying yes to Jesus 
in water baptism. 798 guests, first time guests walking across the thresholds of a church. And I celebrate that number because so many of them have had bad experiences in church. In fact, we have people uh, that, that go to other churches that send their friends to Fusion Church. And I go, why are you sending your friend to Fusion Church? And they go, because my church is crazy. I ain't inviting them to my church. I'm going to send them to your church because you reach people that are far from Jesus. I said, come on. God, give us a heart for those that are lost, those that are dying, those that are bound in shame. Let's celebrate this number. It takes 141 of you on the dream team to make our Sunday services happen in children and students and worship and guest experience and on rainy days like that in the parking lot. Come on, let's give it up for our parking lot team and our greeters outside. Soaping. Every one of you got a brand new soap cart, okay, today. And we'll talk about the spiritual growth journey on the back. Your kids are going to be growing spiritually with the Lego box. We're going to be growing spiritually. And we'll talk about this more next week. We have a brand new soap, scripture, observation, application, and prayer. Over 500 people daily joining us for our soap on different platforms, podcasting and YouTube and the live Zoom. Last year, we saw a supernatural amount of people saying yes financially to trusting God with their tithe. What's a tithe? A tithe is the first 10% that I bring to God. I trust God with my finances before I trust the bank, before I trust anyone else. I say, God, you asked me to bring the first 10% so that the 90 would be blessed more than 100%. And we saw a record number of that. And then let's get really wild for this last number. But total dream teamers, 584 of you dream teamers that make the vision happen here at Fusion Church. And that's dream teamers that are serving in Atlantic City on the streets. That's dream teamers in the children. That's dream teamers in guest experience. That's dream teamers in our intercessory prayer and our safety teams. And the list goes on and on. But if I could personally say this next page about missions giving, this is what I really get excited about here at Fusion Church. Because this is the fruit of you. This is the fruit of trusting God in wild ways. And so in 2012, our first missions gift was $200 because our weekly income was $2,000. So if $2,000 came in, we gave a tithe, correct? $200. And I remember on December 30th of 2012, sitting down with our treasurer, Bob Gilmore, I said, Bob, I said, we got to write a, a gift, a missions gift to a missionary. He looked at me, he said, pastor, he goes, we ain't got the money. I said, Bob, we can't afford not to give. Does that make sense? And so Bob was like, well, we ain't got the money. I said, we're going to trust God because God is a God of miracles in motion. So Bob was like, okay, if the pastor tells me to do it. So he went back to his house in Ocean City, opened his laptop with AOL. How many of us remember the days of AOL? You know, and uh, got on. And he immediately calls me back because he wasn't texting back then. And, uh, and he says, Brandon, he says, you will never believe it. He goes, I came home just after we wrote that check. He goes, I opened my email and there is an anonymous gift from a new giver in California giving to a little unknown church in Summers Point, New Jersey. And the gift, the financial gift was for how much? $200. Because that's the God I serve. We trusted God with the 200. God said, I already had someone giving anonymously for $200. It was taken care of. The question was, in 2012, could you trust me with $200? Now, in 2010, you'll see that in your booklet, why I get wild about 2000 and, sorry, 2017. Why I get wild about 2017 is that in 2017, we gave away over $100,000, okay? And the $100,000 for me was significant. Because when I arrived in 2012, the budget of the church was less than $100,000. And so in 2017, we gave away more in missions giving than what the church received in 2012 in all of its giving. And that's something to celebrate. So come on, let's put our hands together. That was wild back then. And every year, we have gone up and up and up. In 2023, we gave away a hundred, last year, last year, to local national and international organizations that are making a difference. Let's read that number, 2023. We gave away how much? 
173,836. And I love my accounting team here in this church. And how much cents? 64 cents, baby. Why? Because we're going to be faithful until the little bit. We ain't going to fudge the numbers. There's a 64 cents somewhere out there in Atlantic City that we gave them, correct? In total, over 11 years, we've given away, let's read this number together, 1,191,237 and 17 cents, baby. Woo! Why? Why is that important? Because we steward every dollar to the 17 cents. If I came to this country 23 years ago with 25 cents in my pocket, a backpack, a Mickey Mouse tie, and a few weeks later, my beautiful bride, Danielle, fell in love with me. Uh Uh-huh. I was an uncool-looking South African kid, but she said, baby, there's something on the inside. I'm going to mine it out of you. 25 cents. We're going to steward everything in this church down to the 25 cents. Because that is a priority of our church. And our staff knows I'm crazy about that stuff. And so why build, correct? We need to build because we're out of space. Uh, One of our services today, you know we're already in overflow. Last week, our kids were in overflow. Cumberland County, you need a permanent facility. You're sick and tired of putting up pipe and drape every single week. Our EHT, you'll walk in, you're like, oh, it's beautiful over here. Cumberland County, you set up and break down, set up and break down. So come on, let's put our hands together for Cumberland County. You do an absolutely incredible job. And so we're out of space because Sundays is our primary evangelism vehicle. If we saw 798 people walk through the doors, we saw over 900 salvations last year. If we finish our facilities, if we get you into our new field facility, we can see that uh, skyrocket. We could, at one point, I'm believing for 3,000 salvations. In fact, in regards to our missions giving, I'm believing one day we will give away in one year over a million dollars. Okay, that, that's something to celebrate right there. And I know some of us are like, it's a lot. Let me tell you, if last year we gave away $173,000, that's impacting single moms. That's impacting people that are at a poverty level. That's putting food. And we we don't talk about that from the platform, but every single day in that church, that happens. We put gas in cars. We help with rent and electrical payments. We have feeding programs. Uh, We we support churches in this community and in our country. No one even knows. We write checks to those churches just to love on. And we say, hey, keep it quiet. We don't need to tell anyone. And so if we can extend our footprint, it's not about money, but it's extending an impact that we have within our communities. And how many of us can say amen to that right there? And so it's not just our physical buildings, but on the next page, it, it, it's, it's our digital imprint. And our team got back to me and they blew me away by this. But in 2019, so right before COVID, correct? Uh, we, we reached 298,000 people online through all of the different platforms that we have online, okay? Uh, that's kind of, you're just scrolling through and you, you see Fusion Church, and maybe some click, maybe don't some click. But look at that number in 2023. 947,000 people last year in 2023 somehow saw what God was doing. That is something to celebrate right there. That is wild. And remember... Remember what the metric was for those people that live in South Jersey? 1.92 million people live in Southern southern Jersey. So for those of you who are mathematicians, we're nearly reaching 50% of those people. And we want to increase that in the years to come through digital discipleship. In fact, you can see a story here about Nicole Benowitz. Nicole is serving at our Welcome Home Center. Nicole was reached online during COVID. Uh, Nicole was discipled online. Nicole went through an online freedom Zoom group. Uh, Nicole w- w- went through Welcome Home Online, and today she actively serves. And we have a list of those people in our church. And so we've got to realize, just as we're investing resources to finish the physical buildings, we're investing resources into the digital buildings. Because we have people all over the world that are engaging and journeying with us. There's a responsibility as Christians, disciple-making Christians, to be able to invest in reaching people, but also equipping people, and also going and making an impact. Let's talk about on the next page, why build for our children and youth? Because if I'm honest, we're seeing revival in our children's ministry in a greater way than our adults. Our Jingle Jam Christmas show, we saw 100, 100 
children commit their lives to Jesus at a Christmas show. Come on, that is wild. 184 last year, families checking their kids in, trusting us. And so as we talk about the financial numbers to complete these buildings that we're stewarding here at our Cumberland County Newfield building that we were given, one of the things is in regards to children, we want to create a safe children's environment. And that building has a men's restroom in the children's environment. That's a no-no for us here at Fusion Church, correct? And so we've got to put a men's restroom in the woods. No, I'm just kidding about that. Come on, up, come on, men. Let's be honest. We can go anywhere, correct? No, no, we're going to build you a nice restroom next to the lake, but, but it can't be in the kids' area. And so that church was started in 1967, and I guess back in 1967, the men went to the restroom in the kids' area, and the ladies had their nice restroom, and we've got to get the men's restroom out of the kids' area. But we're seeing revival in our student ministry. 78% growth from 23 since 22. That is a miracle right there in a huge way. And I share that story of a young man, 16 years old, choosing to say no to the things of this world. Because at the end of the day, right there, it's for them. Come on, let's say this real loud. For them. Right there in your booklet, come on, for them. It's not for me. Can I take a step closer? I love church. I love worship. But I... I do this because God tells me don't forsake the gathering of the saints. But I have my own Bible study. I feed myself daily. I worship daily. I come together because I want to see revival and I want to see people reach far from Jesus and I want to see discipleship in the buildings of the church. But ultimately, it's for my children. And it's for my children's children that I'm building a legacy. So I sacrifice not for myself, but I sacrifice for them. Amen? So if we look at the next page, this is some of us that geek out at pictures, but these are the architectural renderings, what the outside of our Egg Harbor Township facility is going to look like. Now, we, we developed these five years ago, but because of COVID, because of Greece starting off the COVID, uh, because of, you know, inflation and all those things, we just decided on hold, on hold, staff restructuring. We've gone through a lot as a church, but we knew, and this is important, that our foundation needed to be deep before we could go high. We needed good elders. We needed good staff. We needed a deep foundation before we could go up high. And we believe the time is now to be able to do that. So the whole outside gets a a facelift. There's 37,000 cars a day that drive by our Black Horse Pike. Salem Avenue in Newfield is a thoroughfare of cars. And so God is positioning us in key centers in our communities to be a lighthouse to this community. Here at Egg Harbor Township, the new worship center that we're going to finish has 609 seats. You can see that on the architectural rendering over here. 609 seats, okay? So 609 is a representation of our area code, correct? 609. That's prophetic right there. When the building official looked at it, he was like, huh? 609? I'm like, yes, sir. 609. That's what it's supposed to be. We can put a whole lot more than that. But we're out of space and we recognize that. So there's a mandate to be able to finish that. Uh, the picture you see, the, the yellow part is our temporary worship center. Many of you are in here right now, Cumberland County. You're obviously uh, in a gymnatorium that smells most of the time because of those teenage boys that play basketball. On the next page, you see our Christ Community Church. There was, uh, hopefully we're going to go to closing this week so we can begin re- renovations. Pastor uh, Tony and Lynn, we appreciate you. We love you. The pastors of Christ Community Church, they're assimilating with us and championing this vision. But that church was built in 1967. It needs a lot of renovations. Uh, the men, we got to get you men out of the children's ministry unless you work in the children's ministry. Worship center and various updates need to be happening. The HVAC needs to be upgraded and fully redone. Those are things we need to do. But you can see the gift, correct? Look at these beautiful pictures. Children's area is beautiful. Lobby, kitchen is beautiful. They have great chairs just like us. They have a welcome home banner just like us. See, God was working these miracles even before we knew it. I just think God was asking, can you trust me? Can you trust me with your resources? Could you trust me with the tithes? Could you trust me with your heart at the end of the day? So on this, you know, kind of nearly closing pages, here's the question. What will it take? And again, if you're a first-time guest, 
just sit back and go, man, I'm going to eat that cotton candy. I'm going to slay that root beer float in the next second. But this is for us that are all in here at Fusion Church. And I know that these are big numbers. I know for some of us that are struggling to put food on the table, I was there as a teenager, struggling uh, to find a job. I know these are massive numbers. And what I'm not talking about over the next few weeks, and if I can be clear, what I'm not talking about is equal giving. What I'm talking about is equal sacrifice. Because every one of us can sacrifice something. In this culture that we live in, I'm hanging out with teenagers that have nothing at home, but they're rocking an iPhone better than mine. I got two cameras here. I got some 13-year-old kid that got three cameras over here. I got some older Reeboks today. I'm sitting next to a kid that ain't got nothing at home and he rocking some fresh Nikes over here. I'm like, what am I doing wrong? And so we can all sacrifice. What it's going to take is here at our Egg Harbor Township, it's going to take probably right at 3.7 million to finish the facility. Now, it's, it's a pizza pie. We can take some things out and put some things in. Again, men, we got some woods back there. We can use those, correct? No, we're going to give you a restroom, correct? But ladies, you know, the line that's going to be in the restroom. We're going to give you more restrooms. Our, our, our staff are out of offices. We cram them into offices. We need more office space, more counseling space. We need more resource space for loving on this community. Uh, we have plans at our Egg Harbor Township uh, to build a, a Egg Harbor a police substation that's still on our plans to be able to do that so we can serve our police officers in this community. We're serving those in need and we're serving our first responders at the same time. That is a miracle as a diverse church that we get to do that. In Newfield, that building, it's going to take about $300,000 to be able to do all the changes. So that brings us to $4 million. I know some of us are listening, you're going, whoa, whoa, pastor. Before you were talking about, we've got to raise $2 million. So if we look at the next pie chart, some of you math and science people, you can freak out about this one right here. And so over a 24-month journey, this is a two-year spiritual growth campaign. We're looking to raise in the church $2 million. Now, if we get a $1 million, we're going to be excited. Enjoy our stewardship uh, consultants. I hire people way more cleverer than I am. I am a pastor. I am not a financial analyst. How many of us want to say praise God for that? I pastor well, correct? But, but we hire the right people to look at our data and say, hey, thumbs up if you do a million over 24 months. But Jeff Shortridge, our capital stewardship consultant, said, no, I think you can do one and a half million with a little extra faith. But then he came back and he helped us during our God is Able campaign. He said, but during God is Able, you went above and beyond. A miracle. He goes, I think you can do $2 million over two years in the church. That's the church giving above and beyond their tithes. So we give our tithe, our financial tithe. We trust God with that. But then we look back and, and honestly... Uh, when we did this five years ago during God is Able, we didn't go on any trips. I gave up my Starbucks. We gave up everything. You know, we do, I mean, we just we locked in and we sacrificed. And God showed up in miraculous ways. And so in the next four weeks, we're just going to pray. Say, God, what are you speaking? We're not going to say anything. We're just going to listen to God. And I know some of you are going, but that's $2 million in the church. And you just said this is a $4 million campaign. You're missing $2 million somewhere, Pastor. I know you said you weren't a math guy, but that's a really bad mistake you made. No, I know. So we can do $2 million in the church, but the project's going to cost us $4 million. I'm believing, and please pray for me. I've got to, I've, I've got to raise, through God's help, a $1 million from other churches around the country. And that's a big step of faith. And so we've got some apostolic churches, like Gateway Church, that can invest in us and other churches. And we're praying about how, how do we do that? And then there's a million dollar shortfall over there. And that's where God comes in. That's the miracle in motion. That's where we're just saying, hey God, we're bringing you the impossible for you to make it possible. And if you don't bring it in, well, guess what? We just don't finish different sections. We don't put a sign outside. Again, Cumberland, we're going to make it happen for you. That's, that's my guarantee over there. But we're not going to finish the outside of the building. It's just good as it is right now. And so there's some different pizza puzzle pies that I've got to carry that weight. You don't. You, you show up and you go, man, that cotton candy was amazing. You show up and lead that connect group, that sign-ups begin next week. You lead in that children's ministry. But the elders in our church and myself, we carry a weight to steward the vision and the resources, the 27 cents 
The 17 cents is what we steward here at this church. We take that very serious. So we're just asking over the next weeks for, for each of us to pray. Because here it is as we close. The vision is clear. The why is for them, for our children and our teenagers, for those that are destitute and hungry, so we can equip them and resource them, for those of us that are coming in like the rich young ruler that need our hearts changed because our, our lips are for God, but our hearts are afar from God. The what, to get, finish these facilities is clear. The how, actually making it happen is clear. And the when, well, we want to not do this over 24 months, but Cumberland, we want to get you into that new fuel property as quick as possible. Here at our Egg Harbor Township property, I'm believing in uh, Easter of 2025 that we would have our Easter celebrations in the new one. So come on, everyone, let's celebrate that. And so now, now is the time to pray. And now is the time to step in as a church. And there are options, correct? What do those options look like? Those options, as we kind of outline on the next page, is, well, we can do, you know, add more services. But people in our Egg Harbor Township location will die in our children's ministry if we add more services. How many of us say amen to that right there, correct? I'll lose my voice for four or five services. We could find a new location, but we know that's not what God's called us to do. We could launch another location, but that's not what God's called us to do. He's called us to steward and finish and complete those locations. Because we do have a vision for 21 counties. Egg Harbor Township, when you're done, you can literally go in and see the warehouse. Cumberland County, next week, we're going to start offering tours at the Newfield location. But we could do nothing. This is what I close with. We could do nothing. But this would be unfaithful to the vision that God has entrusted us. And it would also mean rejecting the hurting, rejecting the lost, and rejecting the far from Jesus. And can I be honest? I did not move from Phoenix, Arizona 11 years ago to do nothing. I'm here to do something. And that's to see a difference in this community. To be a lighthouse for those that are far from Jesus. To be a disciple-making machine. To make solid, healed, and set free Christ followers to go out and make the difference. So come on, let's stand to our feet, all of our locations. What am I asking of you? Number one, to pray. That's on the last page right there. That we would pray. That we would begin to ask God about our role in this journey. And let's read together the last one. Share your story of faith. Share your stories of miracles here. Share what you're believing for. But as we begin this spiritual journey over these next four weeks and into the next 24 months, man, I want to be open to what God's doing in my life. Let me pray for you, Father, right now. I pray for every single one of us, God. Lord, that you would fill us with love and mercy. God, whether it's our children and Lego blocks, whether it's us praying and embarking on this spiritual growth journey, give us eyes to see. Give us ears to hear what you're speaking to us. And we pray this and we ask this right now in Jesus Christ's name. And all God's people said, Amen.